Hello and welcome to another edition of Making the Case. It is Tuesday, January 28th, and this is not a live program. It is a previously recorded program, but I have been getting a lot of messages uh, from my viewers and they've been asking um, for making the case. So here I am again. I, I apologize for not being here with you last week, but I was in Region 8. I spent a week there. Myself and Miss Pauline Sukai were traveling the region. We visited many, many communities, over a dozen, and held meetings with the people of Region 8. So I apologize for not being here last week. And this week, I am heading to Essequibo on other outreaches and to do more campaign meetings and to meet with several young people who I wish to talk to about the importance of the upcoming March 2nd general and regional elections. But I am recording this program so that those who are tuning in this evening will have some making the case so after this program, I will speak for about 30 minutes. And then after this, I will air one of my presentations that I made to the community of Tree Friends in Linden. So you'll have a chance to listen to some of the things that we talk about on the campaign trail. Now, concerning Region 8, first of all, I was very happy to be in Region 8. I was privileged to be there and I had a very good experience in the countryside. I enjoyed the scenery, I enjoyed the landscape, and that was my first visit to Region 8. So I was very happy to be there. But the minute I enter the communities, the minute I, I enter the villages and start to speak to the villagers there, to our indigenous brothers and sisters, you you get a sense of sadness because the neglect is very clear from the moment you set foot in those communities. And so we met with them and we held meetings. And what is very, very clear is that the Amerindian people have been forgotten over the past four and a half years. And, you know, they are very upset and especially with the chairman for the region who was a PPP supporter who has now left and joined APNU and the AFC. And he has said, this is a Bonaventure Fredericks, he has said that the AP and new AFC government has done so much for our Amerindian people that he sees it fit to go and join APNU and AFC. However, the situation on the ground is very much different from what Mr. Frederick describes. To begin with, first of all, to meet these communities, to reach to these communities um, is, a, is a difficult task. It's extremely dangerous. The trail has deteriorated to such an extent that people are no longer visiting these communities. Take one community, for example, the community of Tusening. It took us about two hours, two and a half hours on ATV to get to that community. And many times we had to step off of the ATV and walk parts of the, parts of the journey because it was so dangerous. The roads have not been maintained over the past four and a half years by this government. And they have ended the, the CDPs, this, the community development plans that was previously there under the PPP administration, where our party used to give out small contracts to the people who live in those communities so that they can earn an income. And in return for that income, they would maintain the roads, clean the creeks, and, and ensure that the passage is free to get to those communities. So to get to Tucsoning, it took about two and a half hours on ATV. And when we got there, you know, they were so happy uh, that somebody came to their community because they said they feel like they have been forgotten because nobody comes to Tucsoning anymore. 
they have not been visited by any minister of this government. And the regional chairman who just walked away and joined up new AFC also has never held a community meeting to address their issues. And that is part of his duty as the regional chair. And so that community has been neglected like many, many others. There was a medical team who was in Region 8 at the same time that we were there. And we stopped and we asked them if they were, or if they had any intentions of going to Tucsoning. And they told us clearly that the trail is too dangerous, that they will not be visiting the community of Tucsoning. And the people in Tucsoning have also complained about not being paid for works that they did. Over a year and a half ago, they were given one small contract to clean the Tucsoning Creek and to clean one mile up the trail and one mile down. And 18 months later, they still have not been paid for that small contract. And this is what's happening throughout Region 8. One bridge um, that bridged the community of Yawang. That bridge started to be constructed in 2017. The contract was given to fix that bridge, the Yawang Bridge. And it was given to an external contractor. I stopped and I asked the villagers there who live right in the vicinity, feet away from the Yawang Bridge. And I asked them if they, they got any work on the Yawang Bridge, if they were able to earn any money from working on the bridge. And they said no, that an external contractor was brought in and they weren't given any work there. And that was since 2017. And the bridge is nowhere near completion. Almost three years later, the bridge is still dilapidated. All you have is some columns coming out of, of the creek. That's it. Uh, the bridge has not been built and no work is being done there presently. And the medical supplies, it's the same as all across the country, but it's worse in Region 8. Many of the health centers that were built under the People's Progressive Party is closed. There is no medical personnel there. There's no doctor. There's, there are no nurses. There's no medics. Many of the centers are closed, and of course, there are no supplies. Those medical centers that have a medics or a nurse working in there, they have no medical supplies to work with. They said they got some supplies last November, and it had an expiry date of December. <clears throat> so it had one month shelf life. And this is a pattern across Region 8. And so those people are, are very, very desperate. Those people want to see the backs of the APNU AFC government. They remember all that was done for them under the PPP administration. And we committed to them that we will restart many of the programs that we had under our party when we were in government prior to 2015, like the CSO, <coughs> excuse me, like the CSO program, the community service officers, this government sent home 2,000 CSOs. And sometimes they, they, they say that that's not true, uh, but we, we met with several of the, the young people who were employed in the CSO program, young, young men, young women, older people as well uh, who worked in that program and when this government came to office they fired about 2,000 of them. They said they only wanted uh, educated uh, Amerindians, they only wanted persons who can read and write and who know mathematics. But what about the others? You know when we administered and, and we overs oversaw that, that program, the CSO program, there was no discrimination by our government in that program. So APNU supporter, PPP supporter, Amerindian, male, female, young, old, everybody was given a chance to participate in that program and to earn a monthly stipend. Uh, but imagine 
sending 2,000 Amerindians home, what that would do to, to, their, to their households, what that would do to the region, what that would do to their community. So we will restart that CSO program and we will increase that stipend as well. In addition, in addition to that, we will begin the program again, the, the solar panel distribution program that was there under the PPP Civic. This government has not been distributing solar panels to those households. That's the way that they were able to get electricity. And if you can recall, when the PPP left office, we left 6,000 solar panels there to be distributed to our hinterland community. And not a single panel was distributed under this administration. They inherited those 6,000 panels. And when they were asked in the National Assembly what happened to the 6,000 solar panels that were supposed to go to the hinterland community, Harmon got up in the National Assembly and said that it is, it is on State House and it is on Office of the President. That he's on record saying that, that that's where the panels went. We didn't purchase those panels for that purpose. Those panels were meant to be distributed in our hinterland communities. And that's what they did with the 6,000 panels. So, you know, it's not something that's easy to hide. So they had to, to admit to what they did with the 6,000 solar panels. The presidential grant that was started under the PPP administration, this is another initiative and another way for the communities um, to, to get some money to enhance their community and to fund community development projects. The presidential grant was inherited by this, this government, APNU AFC. It was an initiative started by the, the PPP. They have not seen it fit to increase the presidential grant in almost five years now. So the cost of living is escalating or has escalated and they have not seen it fit to even take a small initiative as to just increase that presidential grant. It's still the same as it was when we left office in 2015. And so everything, everything is going up. The price for commodities, as you know, this, this government has implemented 2,000 additional taxes on, on two, sorry, 200 uh, items are now vatable that were not uh, previously taxable. Essential items, including baby diapers and so on. And this contributes to the increased cost of living. And air freight has gone up and there's no VAT on hinterland travel. So all of this makes it extremely expensive to get commodities and to get essential items. You have to purchase it at an extremely expensive price and then when it has to be transported, you have to pay VAT on airfare, and then the cost of freight has also gone up. So it's extremely, extremely difficult for these hinterland communities um, to, to survive. Their cost of living has escalated, and many of the things that they had gotten for free that we subsidized in the PPP prior to 2015 are not being subsidized now, so they're not receiving their fertilizers, they're not receiving the Akushi ants bait that was given to them free of cost under the PPP administration. They now have to purchase those things, fertilizers and, and Akushi ants bait, they have to purchase that and they have to pay fat on it. This is how unconscionable and how uncaring the APNU AFC has been to our Amerindian communities. This is the, the stark reality of what has happened to those communities, especially in Region 8. And so we're going to reverse, we're going to reverse those things. Those communities will be able to receive their fertilizers and their Akushi ants bait once again, once we take office on March 2nd, 2020. And you know, the Akushi ants, the Akushi ants is eating out their produce. 
it's it's making life extremely difficult for the farmers in the region and of course like i said there's no support there's no support for agriculture in that region and you know in region eight uh, people farm and grow their own food and, and they depend on that uh, to live and there's no support from this government um, the removal of the the cash grant to school children the ten thousand dollars has seriously hurt those communities in Region 8. Many of them also complain that they have not received their school uniform grant in over three years. Let me just say that every year, APNU and AFC budget, they, the funds are approved and we support those funds being approved for the distribution of school uniforms to hinterland communities. And every year they budget for it and they receive the monies to do that. Yet, many, many communities are saying to us that they do not receive the school uniform materials anymore. Some said uh, they have, but when they do receive it, the quality is so bad that if you wash the uniforms one time, that's the end of it. So they are not receiving any boots under this David Granger 5Bs program. There are no buses there, no buses can go there. There is no need for boats there. The, the school children do need boots. Uh, they need meals in school. And all of these, the, the PPP hot meal program is still there. Thankfully, they can still receive breakfast when they go to school in the morning because these kids have to walk for miles to, to get to school. And you know, under the PPP administration, we had, we had established, uh, we had achieved universal primary education, which means that in every community there was uh, <coughs> a primary school built. So we had achieved universal primary education, and we were well on our way to achieving university, uh, universal secondary education. And we know that under this administration, they have not built a single secondary school in that region. So many of the kids still have to walk miles to get to secondary school. And sometimes they have to leave, leave their homes and, and move to a different community in order to attend secondary school. So we will continue building schools in these communities and even the dorm allowance, we used to ensure under the PPP that the kids who are staying in the dorms to attend secondary school, that they receive dorm allowance. Now, the kids are not receiving any dorm allowance under this APNU AFC administration. So really, none of their policies, none of their programs have benefited, Region 8 have benefited the Amerindian communities, and this is quite in keeping with the attitude that we saw dished out in our National Assembly by one minister, for example, Keith Scott, when he said in his presentation in the National Assembly that Amerindians are avaricious, that they're greedy, and that if they want more land, or they get more land, they shouldn't benefit from oil money. He said that on the floor of the National Assembly. And the two ministers that are now assigned to the Ministry of Indigenous Affairs sat there and said nothing. No one reprimanded him on the government side, but immediately we raised objection to that on the, the PPP side, on the opposition side, and we demanded an apology from Keith Scott. And of course, you know that that apology never came. His comments were never condemned by, the, by Mr. Granger or any of his ministers. And so that's the attitude that was shown to the Amerindian communities. And there was no repercussion for Keith Scott's comments. Of course, now we know that he has also been sitting in the parliament illegally for the past four and a half years, given the, the recent 
court ruling that he has been there illegally and he's been there offending our Amerindian brothers and sisters during this time. And the same treatment was meted out at the at last year's National Toshau Conference when they were here in Georgetown. I met several of the Toshaus and I did uh, recorded several programs with them when we heard about what was taking place at the conference. So the conference was once again a PPP initiative. We started that conference so that the Toshaus can come once a year to Georgetown, they can meet the ministers in the government, and they can highlight all of the issues and challenges that are faced in their that they face in their communities. And then our ministers can can sit and take notes and come up with solutions on how to address the issues and challenges raised by the Toshows. So really it's an opportunity for the Toshows to speak and for the ministers to listen and take note so that they can get to work on addressing the issues affecting those communities. Last year, they delayed the conference until around October, it's usually held in July. They delayed it until October and they used it, this APNU AFC administration used the conference to campaign. They used it as a campaign event so instead of them listening to the Tushaus, instead of the Tushaus having the floor and the freedom to highlight the issues affecting their communities, they were made to sit and the ministers lectured to them. Lectured to them about what the constitution is and that they have trying to make their case that they have not violated the constitution and using the event to campaign, sharing out green t-shirts and all of these things. They politicized the event. They used to say that the PPP used to politicize the event. Not so, we never used that event to do that. That event was always um, given, all the Toshaws were always given the, the freedom to express themselves and to bring to light their issues. But this bunch here, APNU and the AFC, they used it to lecture and to make their case to the Tushaus and, and to give out gifts, to buy votes. So the conference, once again, didn't serve the purpose that it was supposed to serve because this SAP new AFC government really does not care about the Amerindian people. They have not done anything to further their rights. And it's a pattern that continues. Four years ago, uh, sorry, about a year ago, when um, Sidney Alicott was, was cornered by the media and asked how many land titles he had given out, even though the money was left there by the PPP administration to continue issuing land titles and extension to land titles. In four years, after four years, when the media cornered him and asked him how many land titles he had given out, over the four years, he said, I have given out none. At least he spoke the truth because it's not really something that you can hide. So he said he had given out none. So last year, at the end of last year, during the period when they're illegal and unconstitutional, they got busy giving out land titles and among other things. And we know they've only given out about five land titles from last year to now. The ICT hubs that Kathy Hughes is taking credit for now, an initiative, once again, an initiative by the People's Progressive Party. Money left there from the LCDS program. And over four years, she sat there and did nothing. And it's only in December, December of 2019, just a month ago, that several communities received their first internet hub. And it's not even a hub, it's barely a connection because they contracted an external contractor to come and just put a dish, a dish and give a small um, signal. 
So you have to have a smartphone in order to, to access the internet and you have to be in, the, in very close range to the internet hub to get internet access. That was not the way the program was designed by the PPP. It was supposed to be a program that's supposed to be executed in phases. Uh, one phase was the, the, the construction of the building and, and then phases would follow where you would get the internet connection and then computers would have been installed in, those, in the building, in the, the ICT hub, so that the kids from the area can go and do their research and to print their homework or, or, or to print whatever, whatever they have to do for school. Because many of the, all of the, 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 the villages there, they don't have any devices. Some of them have phones, yes, but they don't have the, the laptops or the desktop computers in order to, to use the internet in a more effective manner. So that was the way the program was designed and intended to be implemented under the PPP. This bunch here at New AFC have made a mess of it. They sat on that money, they did nothing, nothing with it. And then they're now running around busily just trying to, to install a dish and give a little connection and saying that they're delivering internet to hinterland communities. Uh, so so this, is, this is how incompetent this bunch is. They have no vision. They have not made a single new investment, not only in the hinterland communities, but in this country. They don't have any idea of how to stimulate job creation, on how to get this economy going again. And, you know, we have to ensure once we go back there on March 2nd, and we have committed to ensuring that we increase the presidential grant, that we rehire those 2,000 and more CSOs that were fired. We're going to, to rehire those people, and we're going to ensure that they give their service to their communities. We're going to continue the CDP program so that the villagers, men, women alike, can get work maintaining the roads and the creeks so that these communities can stay accessible. We want to promote tourism in those areas because like I said, when I started this program, our country is so breathtakingly beautiful and that region is so beautiful. It was an adventure being there. I welcome the experience to be there, but then when you go on the ground and you see the devastation, you see the neglect that these communities have faced over the last four and a half years, it's, it's heartbreaking. And that region is in trouble. And, and we have to start, uh, we have to take back this country on March 2nd, and we have to deliver for those people. We have to restart the solar panel program to ensure that they get electricity. We have to ensure that we staff those medical centers, that once again, those medical centers can have supplies and have a staff there who can take care of the community. Dentists, I haven't seen a single dentist in that week that I was there. Most, most of the communities are without a dentist, so it's, it's very, very difficult uh, for those people. Just, you just imagine uh, what their life is like on a daily basis and how far they have to travel if they have to seek emergency medical attention. Many of the communities are without ATVs. We had distributed many ATVs and pickup trucks and uh, tractor trailers to those communities. And when they have a problem now, if they need servicing, um, it's usually just left abandoned. So there's been no funding coming into to the communities to repair their ATVs. Most of their transportation is done. Most of the communities don't have any form of transportation. They all have to walk to get to where they have to go. And so it's, it's heartbreaking in Region 8. And um, we look forward, and they look forward to the 2nd of March, and they will turn out in their numbers 
The presidential candidate, Dr. Irfan Ali, will be in the region, I believe, starting tomorrow. He's going to be there for, for a few days, meeting with them. They can get to see uh, the presidential candidate on our side. They can get to, to meet him in person, to shake his hand, um, to, to, to look him in the eye and have him look them in the eye and to, to commit to them that he will improve their lives, that he will restore what was there previously, before 2015, and that we will improve on all of the services and all of the programs that we had that was delivering uh, for Region 8 prior to 2015. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for joining me. Um, please stay tuned. I will hear immediately after this program one of my uh, campaign presentations. This was when I made a visit to Linden. And, and like I said, the PPP is an inclusive party. It's a natural home, as the GS said, for, for Afro-Guyanese, Indo-Guyanese, everyone. Hindu, Muslim, Christian, it's a natural home. We're all inclusive and you know we, we welcome everyone to our party. There's lots of room. And so this was my address to, to Linden, where we never, we, never, we never neglected Linden, even though they're traditionally APNU AFC supporters, we never neglected Linden because the government has to govern and deliver for all of the people, not just their supporters. And so immediately following this is my address to a small community in Linden. So please stay tuned for that. And thank you very much. I am off to Essequibo. Those of you who are watching from Essequibo, please find out where I'll be and I would love to meet you. So thank you very much for joining me.